A few years ago, I made a video about the pros and cons of moving to Atlanta. The vast majority of comments I received were positive, being that my video mainly pointed out all the great things I thought about living here. However, about every 20th comment, there was someone who thought I was out of my mind. They voiced their criticism of Atlanta and the criticism about me in general. I have now been living in Atlanta for over 11 years. I think it's time I do a follow-up about my opinion of Atlanta and address the many issues others say they have about living in this city. So this will be the pros and cons of living in Atlanta, part two. Engage. Travel is my passion, passion, passion. PassportKings.com Travel lifestyle will never be the same again. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel enthusiast and travel advisor who makes videos to inform, review, and excite you about every kind of vacation destination. If this is a topic you like, consider subscribing to Passport Kings and ringing the bell so you can be the first in to know when I upload new content. I'm originally from the Bronx. So all the comparisons that I ever made about Atlanta was from the point of view of a person who was born and raised in New York City. However, I have been recently traveling from state to state in the US, mainly to make domestic content for this YouTube travel channel. So although I have not lived in any other cities in America for an extended amount of time, I feel like I've still had a good opportunity to learn what other cities are like. When people say Atlanta, they are usually talking about what's called the Metro Atlanta area. Atlanta is a circle, literally. The circle is actually outlined by the I-285 highway. Metro Atlanta includes everything within that circle, which is mostly Fulton County and a little bit of DeKalb County. Then the immediate surrounding areas, which you probably hear the most about, like Cobb County and Gwinnett County, are to the north, and Clayton and South Fulton are to the south which is down by the airport. Most people moving here should probably move to the surrounding metro area, which is less hustle and bustle and probably cheaper and more relaxed. Go to work and party in the city, but then you can go home and relax and it's only about 10 minutes away. As you get further out into the counties, things may become a little too hick and sticks for the average city slicker. I've lived in Cobb County the entire time that I've been here and I really feel like I made the best choice of where to live in Metro Atlanta. So in the comments of my first video, a lot of people complained about the job situation they found themselves in when they moved here. I kept reading that there are no jobs in Atlanta or jobs don't pay a good wage. I could see that happening, especially if you have never specialized in anything. Gas stations, restaurants, and retail stores will offer you a laughable wage. With the check coming from one of those places, you will have a hard time maintaining. However, I don't think you should be planning your life based off of one of those jobs. Leaving your original city should be a sign to yourself that you are growing up. Those jobs are for teenagers. I suggest being an entrepreneur when getting here either opening your own business based on your passion or joining a network marketing company if you're serious about their product or service and networking. But I understand that being a business for yourself is not for everybody. If that's the case for you, you need to learn a skill. Learning a basic skill like medical assistant, mechanic, sales, coding, or network security is a great place to start. Training can get done in about six months. If that worries you, take those courses before you leave the city that you're in. After you get your career fixed, you may just want to stay in the city that you're in. But I hope one of those jobs you get with that training is not the top of your evolution. You can be anything you want to be in Atlanta. Moving and learning a well-paying skill should only be the beginning. Work in the day and go to school at night. I can't guarantee my experience, but there were days after I first moved here where I thought, what the hell have I gotten myself into? I also know plenty of people who moved back to their hometown after being here for only a few months. The funny thing is though, about 75% of them come back after they get a refresher course of how their hometown treats them upon arrival. Nobody missed you. And everyone is doing the same exact thing they were doing when you left. You will realize time was only moving for you while you were in Atlanta. In your hometown, nothing was getting better. As the well-renowned poet Rakim once said, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. I believe he was talking about mentality. So mentally, where are you? If you want everything else to remain the same in your life, but think that a change in surroundings will magically change your mental state, you're wrong. But if you do get your life together in your hometown, why would you then leave and move to Atlanta? Well, Atlanta is a great place to start over. Yes, Atlanta has great bars, great food, great weather, great women, and a great welcoming vibe among everyone. But the greatest thing about migrating to a city that others have migrated to is everyone came here for a better life. 
Everyone here was tired of the city that they were living in. The camaraderie that people have translates well among each other. There's a mutual respect and curiosity of what people from other cities are like. There's also an urge to meet each other. A lot of adults moved here alone or just as one family unit. If you're not a jerk out here, people are anxious to meet each other. Of course there are snobs here and there, but most times they are just suffering from low self-esteem. And if they weren't suffering from that low self-esteem, they would be happy meeting each other too. The cost of living in Atlanta is definitely going up. Where I live, they recently created a new Atlanta Brave Stadium and the gentrification in this area is obvious. However, homeowners actually benefit from the price of real estate rising in this area. The most important thing to keep in mind is that even with a higher costing living situation, it's still a much better deal than what I would be getting paying this kind of money in New York City. There is a lot of square footage still available in this city, and it's going to living spaces instead of businesses. Manhattan real estate has an average of $1,773 per square foot, according to the site called Neighborhood X. But according to Zillow.com, the median list price per square foot in Atlanta is $235, and that's higher than the Metro Atlanta average of $132 per square foot. The median price of homes currently listed in Atlanta is $325,000, while the median price of homes that is sold is $241,000. I get that most people don't live in Manhattan, but remember that the Bronx and certainly Brooklyn is in full gentrification mode and Manhattan's prices are not that high above the rest of the boroughs lately. And let's not even mention the waiting list that they will put you on to get a new apartment if you're not inheriting it from your parents after they passed on. There are no waiting lists in Atlanta. Come with the money and you can move in that day. So as of now, I still feel like there is no other U.S. city that I would prefer to live in. Atlanta still has everything I need to live comfortably and with purpose. When I moved here, I was in my 20s and the party atmosphere, which I participated in every week, was far different and far more exciting. I remember first getting to a party and seeing droves of some of the most beautiful women ever walking down the street in the Buckhead area headed towards this nightclub called Uranus. It's been many years since that entire area was shut down and made into a more residential area. But recently, even though we were older than most of the people in the crowd, my friends and I recently went to Club Compound because a friend of ours was in town for the weekend. The amount of beautiful women walking in and out of that place would make a man who's not prepared for that kind of beauty heart stop. And that's no exaggeration either. It's like a horny dude's Instagram feed is in real life walking around out there. After that outing, I can safely change my countdown of the cities with the most beautiful women in America. The Atlanta women definitely take the cake. At my age, I go to bars or little clubs every once in a while just to socialize, but most of my money now is saved for traveling abroad. But it doesn't end there. Going to a supermarket at evening rush hour will give you the same experience, but with women who are more about their business. If I ever became single again, the two places you would find me lurking around would be the gym between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. and the local Kroger supermarket between 4.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. The looks of the women that you will see in those places will drive you insane. If that doesn't work because you're too shy or give up at the first sign of rejection, get a temporary job at any call center in Atlanta between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. The women who work in call centers in Atlanta look like models working a job in between gigs. Me the Dom, do people still say Dom? Bag her up, do people still say bag her up? Fall in love with one, then quit the job to start on your prosperity again. But if you don't wanna be in a relationship with just one girl, Atlanta is still a single man's paradise. Just never lose focus on becoming a better person. While you're at that gym, work out. While you're at the supermarket, buy vegetables so you can start juicing five days a week. And while you're at that call center, be studying for a new career. One complaint I saw over and over is, the people in Atlanta are fake. Every time I heard this complaint in real life, it always seemed to be coming from a person who was mad that another person didn't let them move in with them or agree to always give them a ride home from work. People are not fake. They're just working on their own lives and putting another adult up is a hassle. Having you sleeping on their couch or in an extra room is not what they had in mind when they purchased their home. That person is not fake to not want to bend over backwards for you. They had the same growing pains as you had when they first moved here. What they learned by going through the same situation is knowledge that they are passing on to you. You have to get started with your change immediately. You do not need a break. Acquiring a car and a place to stay takes work, but in Atlanta it's pretty easy. Once you have those things, you will appreciate them even more. Then when someone you know moves down here and looks at you like your belongings should belong to them too, you won't want to roll out the red carpet either. 
By the way, letting a grown adult move in with you is the easiest way for you guys to lose your friendship. Being in each other's face all the time becomes stressful on both people within a week. People in Atlanta are not fake. They're just being adults that are on the hook for taking care of themselves and the family they created. Just because they say no to you moving in with them does not mean that they don't love you. Now the biggest complaint I read on the last video came down to people that I feel just felt alone. If you're just missing your peoples, social media will keep you up to date with them better than physically being in their faces ever would have. Plus a lot of them want to see you progress after you moved. Update them. And if worse comes to worse, just go visit them from time to time. A plane ticket up the east coast is usually less than 100 bucks. But that's if you plan far enough in advance. I know in my case, when I go up to New York to visit my family, I am very happy to see everyone. Every time I'm in New York City for Thanksgiving, I have a wonderful time. But as soon as the festivities are over, I'm ready to get on the first thing smoking back home to Atlanta. My friends and family are great, but that city owes me nothing. And just the price of things alone makes that sentiment obvious. Other complaints I heard was whoever named the streets down here was not forward thinking. It's true. Some streets will change name without notice, and some will even take you around in a circle. But once you're here for a few months, you will get familiar with your surroundings. It still will confuse you from time to time, but I don't know anyone 10 years old or older who doesn't have a cell phone with GPS on it. They say the traffic is terrible at rush hour, but when compared to other big cities, it's really no different. At least Atlanta sometimes has six lanes on the highway. The trick is to get a job that starts and ends a few hours before rush hour. Now I would again mention the people are gay in Atlanta thing, but like I said, I've been all over this country. If you think Atlanta is the only place with a big gay population, you need to pay closer attention to your surroundings. I also heard people say that people like to fake it till they make it in Atlanta. This whole country has people living on credit cards, living paycheck to paycheck, and buying things they probably can't afford. But when it comes to things like home ownership, there's nothing wrong with being proud of what you are able to acquire. Others may see your stuff and backseat drive about how they would never live that way. But honestly, that's nobody's business but that person's. Being proud of what you have is not faking it. It's just enjoying life and there is nothing wrong with adding material proof to your aspirations. Some people will hear about rent in apartments being $500 to $700 and decide to move to one of those apartment complexes thinking only about the money they'll be saving. You will be in for a shock, however. Low income people are the same no matter where you are. These places are so cheap because they are not desirable areas to live in. Of course, most of the people living there will be hardworking and just temporarily staying there until they find a better opportunity. But more than enough people will be stuck there financially and mentally and those are the type of people you moved away from in your hometown in the first place so pay about 900 to 1400 dollars in rent and you will feel like you are in the laps of luxury with people who are living their best lives but remember that your ultimate goal should always be to own a home out here that's when your mortgage will get back down to about 700 to 800 dollars a month and your living situation will be more ideal for the Atlanta experience but still the biggest advantage to me is those public places lines. Wherever you have to go, be on time for your appointment and you are in and out. Getting your license plate updated, for instance, is about a five minute process in a local DMV. It still amazes me. I really don't understand why people say Atlanta is overcrowded. What's really happening is your ass is late for work and no one is getting out of your way on the highway so you can make up your time by speeding. That doesn't mean the city is overcrowded. That means you should stop hitting the snooze button when it's time for you to get up. To be honest, what I found is some people are going to be miserable wherever they are. If you're not ready to change your life, don't come down here thinking that rainbows and miracles are gonna be shooting out of Atlanta's sewer system. You know you were thinking about leaving your hometown for a reason. I mean, that's why you clicked on this video. So when you get here, don't start preaching all of this positive nostalgia about back home once you get here and a few things don't go perfectly for you. Most people in Atlanta are also transplants. We have an idea of your hometown and we don't believe you about how great it was. Besides, like I said in the last Atlanta video, if you didn't own city blocks of real estate in your hometown, it's not your hometown. Your parents just happened to birth you there. If you're thinking about moving to Atlanta in 2019, ask yourself if you are ready for a personal transformation. Are you ready to up your standards? Are you ready to work hard to achieve your goals? If those answers are no, do yourself and everybody a favor and just stay where you are. If those answers are yes, get prepared for the most important positive transition in your life in a city that will welcome you with open arms and bounce.
<laughs> Do people still say bounce? Well, I'm gonna say it. Bounce like a king of passport kings. Jeez.